cross into Albania from Montenegro after a week. The road along the south side of Lake Skodar was narrow, sketchy, but breathtaking. Fortunately, we didn't come across very many cars going the other direction, as much of the road is barely wide enough for us to pass. Only a small herd of cows grazing on vegetation along the cliffside gave us any trouble at all. We didn't really mind though. After all, these are the locals. We spent the night before crossing the border in the town of Ulcing, Montenegro. It is right near the border on the Adriatic coast. But what we didn't know was that there is no direct way to cross into Albania from here. We would have to backtrack a dozen miles the next morning to a border crossing inland. We stayed in the parking lot with beautiful views of the castle across the bay with the beach below. In the busy season, it cost 10 euros to park there overnight. There was no one here during our stay, and with all the research we've done, everyone says that it's free in the off-season. We did have some old man try to charge us in the morning by claiming that there was some sort of private side of the parking lot that we were parked in. It sounded very suspicious, and the scraps of paper he was scribbling onto in his hand looked far from official. And he was caught a little by surprise when Marlink spoke to him in his native tongue. He backpedaled and kept lowering the nightly price and eventually left. We didn't want to stick around for any other hassles, so we packed up and left for the border crossing. As we head further south towards and into Albania, there are noticeable poverty as compared to Croatia and much of Montenegro. Albania is one of the poorest countries in Europe. Immediately crossing into the border, as we pulled over to purchase temporary vehicle insurance, a mother and her three children, I presume they were of Romani descent, immediately approached us. First, they asked for money. After I handed them what I had in my pocket, they continued to ask for clothing, shoes, and everything else they could see inside our van. It was sad to see people living in such impoverished lives, and what we can do to help them can only benefit them in the short term. We decided to make our way to the coast once we entered Albania. After a quick stop at the grocery store to get our tourist SIM cards to get data, we made the drive to the port city of Durez. We didn't know what to expect in Albania. And to be totally honest, Durez was not a great place for a good first impression. We drove into town on a Sunday and the streets were packed and parking lots were full. We eventually found a secured paid parking spot by the coast. They wanted five euros for parking, but they only charged the locals a third of that price. The area around Durez has thousands of years of human habitation. Since its founding by the Greeks in seventh century BC, it has been ruled by the Romans as well as the Byzantine Empire. Unfortunately, very little of what was once here is preserved. In the 1960s, an ancient Roman amphitheater was discovered. At the archaeological museum we visited, amazing relics uncovered from the ruins are on display. Roman sculptures, columns, and carvings rival the best in the region. Much of that archaeological work is still going on today, but from what we can tell, no other signs of those ancient empires still exist as you look around the city. Albania is the first country since we entered Croatia four months ago where we can't read or speak the language. Albanian is a very unique language and belongs in its own branch of the European language tree. There is nothing like it in the world. We had to learn some new words and common phrases, but fortunately we were able to get by fairly well with English in most places. One of the biggest draws of Albania to Americans is how easy it is for us to travel here. The government of Albania is a strong ally to the United States, and the people here are very friendly to all tourists. As a U.S. citizen, you can stay up to a full year without the need for a visa. The low cost of living is also extremely attractive. Even though it's a poor country, all of the modern conveniences are here. Restaurants, nightlife, shopping, are all about as good as its neighboring countries at a fraction of the price. For example, a meal at a local counter fast food restaurant cost around 120 to 200 lex. As of February 2019, a US dollar would get you 110 Albanian lex, their local currency. A family of five like ours can easily have a nice meal at a fine dining restaurant for less than $20. 
We stayed right next to the main waterfront for a week and ate out at least once a day. Along the thoroughfare, there are games, vendors, and carnival rides that we walk past each day. At only 100 legs per kid, we splurged and let them drive bumper cars every day that we were there. After seven days, we felt pretty settled into our stay here in Albania and are ready to explore some more. Next stop is Albania's capital city of Tirana. It is the largest city in the country, and stay tuned as our next video will give you a glimpse into our time there.